All right, hello, and welcome to my new tutorial series for Unity, which will be a 2.5D RPG. Uh, so if you think like to the original sort of fallouts, where it's sort of it's like an isometric RPG, I'm thinking something similar to that. But instead of being turn-based, it'd be real time. And instead of having the isometric perspective, I'm going to have like this, I don't know what it'd be called. Because I know isometric would be uh, sort of an angle to everything, but this isn't because it's a lot easier with colliders and stuff. So the best example of kind of what I'm trying to get for gameplay wise is this uh, <clears throat> basically Death Trash by Stephen Hovelbrinks. I, I don't know if I'm butchering that, but yeah. Uh, basically, this is sort of what I'm looking to aim for by the end of the project. So, like, you know, with the movement and pixel art and stuff, you know. Because it's a really good game. You should go follow him at Tailcrafter on uh, Twitter. So I'm fucking buzzing for this, but whatever. So yeah. So I'm basically just going to make a 2.5D RPG. And with that, I'll bring us on to the first little thing I've got to decide is since we use... Uh, well, sorry, the first little thing. Well, two things, actually. Uh, one is sort of uh, movement, so how the character will sort of move around the place and collisions. Because since it's all on a two D plane, we're going to try and give the illusion of it being three D by having like the uh, the uh, sorting order switch and having colliders move, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Just going to drink a drink. Okay. So you can see our bloke here, and he sort of reacts to how the. Uh, where the mouse is in relation to him. It's kind of hard to s sort of see, but you can see how like his head turns to face the uh, mouse and stuff, and his legs change a little bit, and his sprite gets flipped and stuff, so... That's one of the things that I'll show you how to do. Uh, and the other thing is that we got these uh, 2D sprites, but if we go behind them, the uh, character gets rendered behind them. As you can see, we can't walk through them, so I'll just hold down, and it'll keep coll colliding with it. But likewise, if we go in front of this one, we can see that we're in front of it now, and we can't go through it. And we go behind it, we're behind it, again, behind and through. Yeah. You know. So that is kind of what I'm getting at with the uh, whole 2.5D kind of thing. Whereas it's a two-dimensional plane, things are drawn on, but thanks to some trickery with colliding and sorting orders, it kind of looks 3D. So let's get on to how I did this. Sorry, so I must uh, drop my drink there. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, the object monitor script I've uh, created, and the basic idea for it is to be sort of uh, two things actually. It, one, it controls the collider through these two colliders, which account for the player being above the object, like as in uh, above it on the y-axis, because that's what you're using for up and down in this, and being below it on the y-axis. So. So I'll just show you actually on the thing. So as you'll see, each of these walls have two separate colliders. So you'll see that we've got one here and one here, which is below it. And basically, so yeah, so we've got two colliders, one for if the player is above and one for if the player is below. And that gets switched between based on the Y coordinate of the uh, player. So we have a static transform for the player because, uh, yeah, I just... I, thought, I sort of had a thought, which probably was obvious to anyone who's done a lot of programming, but, you know, you can click with me, is that we only really need one reference, like, in the entire script, because it'll be the same player, rather than, like, having an instance of the player within every object's monitor script. So, basically, I've got a public static transform of the player's position. So, on awake, if the player is null, it'll find it. So... For the first instance of the object monitor script, it will find the player, and then every other instance will have it, so that'll be good. Hopefully that'll save some kind of processing power or memory or whatever. Uh, then we just get the sprite renderer, which we use for something else later. And then, if the object is less than 20 units away from the player, uh, we call these two methods to decide to collide to use and decide the sorting order. Uh, this is basically just to save performance because, you know, if we're more than 20 units away, chances are the object's off screen and we don't need to do any of this shit. So, yeah. 
But if we are less than, if the object is less than 20 from the player, we decide the collider to use. So basically, I'm sorry, it's waiting for the train to go past. So yeah, so if the player is above this object's Y position, then we enable the above collider and disable the below one. Otherwise, we disable the above one and enable the below one. Simple. And we also have a sort of way of doing the sorting order, uh, setting the sorting order so that when uh, like the players move around and stuff, uh, it's rendered on the correct layer. So as you can see here, uh, we are setting the sorting order to the camera dot main dot world to screen point of this the transform of the the object's y coordinate, and then we're multiplying that by minus one because of how the uh, how the uh, sorting order works. So by doing this, by doing it like this, sort of the uh, higher the y value, uh, sort of like higher the y value of the position of the object, the sort of uh, it's rendered first, basically, because we're multiplying it by minus one. So if you can imagine, things would be rendered down from the screen. So if we were in play mode, it would be these two walls rendered first, then all the player's components, then these two walls, because of where they are converted to screen coordinates. And the reason we convert to screen coordinates rather than by using, uh, say, the normal uh, Y coordinate for the position is that sorting order, I think it's something like either minus 32,000 to 32,000 positive or minus 16,000 to 16,000 positive because there's only a finite number of sorting orders we can have. And by using... Uh, this by converting it to a screen coordinate, we get the same effects, but chances are the resolution will hopefully your resolution isn't going to some ridiculous level. So, in the far flung future of 100,000 by 100,000 monitors, we might lose, they might crash, but whatever. But for now, since I'm only on a 1080p monitor, there are only 1080 possible sorting orders which is more than enough and it doesn't break the limit. So it'll only be between zero at the bottom, of the, if it was at the bottom of the screen and minus 1080 if it was at the top. So that is why. And yeah, and that's all. That's how the objects are sorted. Now I will go on to how I've set up the player controller. All right, and now we'll get on to how the sort of player character is sort of done. Uh, what I've done here is I've sort of created four classes, well, because I'm trying to keep these uh, reusable so I can have them with the AI as well as player characters. Sorry. Uh, so basically, there's four identical classes, one for each of the component, uh, like sort of main body parts. So I've got the torso here, legs, head, and arms. Sorry. So I'll only go over one of them. Uh, so we've got a sprite. Uh, set of sprites for each of the directions. So, got up, diagonally up, facing right, diagonally down, and just down again. And the reason we don't have like left facing ones is that we can just use the flip sprite. Uh, so, if we flip on the x axis, we just get the sprite reversed, and that's it, just storing all the sprites. So, yeah. Uh, so, first off, um, oh, it's got both the flipping sprites and a sprite render. So we just get the sprite render in the awake. And now we have a load of methods for setting the direction of the object. So yeah, first off, uh, we've got like setup. So if you can imagine, it sets the sprite that we need, uh, whether we should flip the sprite. And we set the sprite render as to flip or not flip based on the thing. So as you can see, it's a fairly simple idea. So in this case, we're just setting up, saying no flips, and we set that to the sprite renderer in case we were flipped on the previous direction. Uh, and again, for setup right, uh, we're using the sr.sprite uh, 
we're setting SR the sprite renderer sprite to be the diagonally up sprite. We don't want to flip the sprite and just set the sprite renderer flip X again. But if we wanted to go up left, for example, it'd be the same sprite, but we'd set flip X, flip sprite to true, so we'd be able to flip it. And that's kind of the same principle we've used. So again, if we're setting the to face right, we set the sprite to right, but if we're setting once we set it to left, we also set it to right, but we flip the sprite, so then it's facing left. Simple. And yeah, we have a set order for setting the sorting order of the sprite renderer. Which is used in a minute. So yeah. Uh, that's basically identical for legs, head and arms as well. Uh, human also has a a human is like a controller for these uh, four components. So again, we have a human torso, human legs, human head, and human arms for each one. And we have a starting order as well, an integer. And we just get these all on awake for. A... I'm storing the human on the torso object because that that acts as like the uh, parent object of the uh, sort of whole human thing, and then. All the legs, head, and arms are children objects. So we use get component and children rather than just get component. And yeah, so first off, we've got a method to decide the sorting order. Again, identical to the ones in the object monitor, we're just using the y coordinate of the position of the object. Uh, converted to a screen coordinate, so it's between minus 1080 and 0, and then, well, that is multiplied by minus 1, so it's between minus 1080 and 0 on my monitor, which it may be different on yours if you have higher resolution or lower resolution monitor. And that's cast to int and then stored in sorting order and saved for later. And that is just called the update function, so it keeps it refreshed. Okay, and next up. You'll see that we also have uh, methods for setting the direction of the human. So as you can see, we got on this setup method, we basically call each of the uh, objects setup methods, or each of the uh, like limbs or body components, whatever you want to call it, we call the setup method. And then we set the sorting orders based on that. So if we're facing up, we want the arms to be rendered first because it'd be like they're in front of the player, but the camera's behind the player, so we can't see it. So arms are set to sorting order minus one, so they're rendered first, and again with the head, so it appears sort of in front of the torso, and then the torso and the legs just appear on the normal sorting order. And that's a similar thing for like setting up and right, uh, setting all the directions, so I'll just like have a quick look over them. So yeah, uh, and finally, uh, we have the actual player controller, which again stores a human script to reference all the components for it. And we have a vector free for the mouse position in world coordinates, which we use to work out which direction we're facing and adjust the sprites accordingly. So first off, on update, we have this uh, set mouse position in world, which just stores where the mouse position is as world coordinates. So we just return camera.main.screen to world point input that mouse position. Uh, and then we call this the side direction to face uh, method, which basically checks is so. Uh, Uh, yeah, sorry, I was mind blank for a second. Uh, right, so basically, if the uh, right, I'm just gonna draw like a little diagram, so I'll be back in a second. All right, so basically, the direction is controlled by four booleans that I've uh, sort of created in the script, which you'll see there. This diagram basically shows uh, based on where the mouse coordinates in the world are in relation to the player will like change these booleans. So if uh I'll just see if I can draw on this. Uh so just change the colour, green. So if the mouse was here, 
then the more X boolean would be false, but the more Y boolean would be true. And from those two booleans, the uh, the scriptor will work out that, all right, we need to face up and to the left. Whereas if we were here, we'd be able to see that mid X equals true. So, and more Y is false, so we need to face down. And that's kind of how it works. And then, so, basically, if... Uh, I'll go back to the script now, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, so basically what we do is we check. So if the uh, mouse coordinate dot x is within, um, is more than the the player's position dot x plus one, or it's less than the player's position minus one, then mid x will be false but either more x will be either true or false based on whether it is above or below the uh, x coordinate value and again if it's within this two unit uh, sort of midpoint then mid x will be true and we do a similar thing for y Just zoom in a bit actually so no one complains about seeing it so yeah so we work out whether mid y is true or false, and if more y is true or false. And then using these, we work out which direction to make the uh, character face. So if mid x is true, and either mid y is true or more y is false, then we set the uh, human to be facing down. Otherwise, we say if more y is true, then and the mid x is true, then we're saying, all right, you need to face up. But if mid x isn't true, uh, and more x is true, and mid y is true, then we set right. So if more x is true, so the uh, cursor is to the right of the player, yeah, oh, all right. Uh, based on whether the y is, we'll either set it to be facing directly to the right, if mid y is true, to the up and right, if more y is true, or, or down and right, if the uh, y, more y is false. And again, we have a similar thing for the other side. So if more x is false, then we're on the left. So we need to check, basically set left instead of right. And that's kind of how the eight directional movement works. So I'll just give you a quick demo of this again. So as you can see, there, he's not changing direction based on where he is. Uh, the sorting order of the objects changes. So we can like be here and move around stuff. And yeah. That was pretty much it for today. So cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out Loudo Quiet. I put out a trailer last week, I believe, last Saturday, uh, which I was quite proud of. I will probably re-record some bits again because a very nice person in the comments gave me a hint as to how to fix the little lines that appeared between shit, which was kind of annoying, but I've got that fixed now. So I'll re-record some of the footage and re-upload it. Then I need to put it on the Steam page. and. I've decided on a date for the release. It's actually going to be November 20th. So that'll be all fun and games. Uh, I've just got to finish off some legal shit so I can pay tax, which is kind of depressing. And all that shit. Well, if I make enough money to pay tax, then I've probably made it. So, you know. Whatever. Uh, what else? So yeah, uh, go check out my shit on Itch.io, links will be in the description, and next time I'll have some better sprites so you can see the actual directional movements looking a bit better. So yeah, cheers for watching, and goodbye!